have you ever thought that or even considered the fact that we're all wired different it's so evident isn't it when you have uh, cousins or siblings or grandchildren and you see and observe the uniqueness of how each of them uh, interact or play what are their favorite like I had the grands today what what's your favorite shake flavor and uh, so with that it's it's never far from my thoughts that each of us are unique have different passions desires and wants but as a believer how much more does that become evident that as a part of the body of Christ where Christ is the head and we're all members he has a unique plan a purpose a design for us to fulfill in that story that he has written for you and me so although we may have different passions and values there are some important things that we share in common and we all want to know that we matter we want to know and I love how God's word encourages us whether we're the eye or the the hand or the feet they are all needed in the body of Christ where he is the head and you and I understanding the celebration the opportunity to encourage each of us in our unique ways that's a part of God's plan and Proverbs 25 puts it this way the purposes in a human mind they're like deep water but an intelligent person will draw it out you know it takes time as we grow up and get away from childlike ways for us to get back to our roots to get back to the beginning of who we are you know as a child they're ready to tell you who they want to grow up to be their mind is filled with imagination and possibilities and you and I we've been given that gift of imagining of contributing to a future beyond ourselves one that can leave a mark for generations to come but when we grow up sometimes we forget we leave aside the magnificence of dreaming of having God shape and stir and awaken something far bigger than what we could ever imagine in Ephesians 320 I love and I often go back to that reminder that he wishes above all things right that we understand that he wants to do far over and above all that we could dare ask or think infinitely beyond what we could ever hope or imagine and so in this journey of life sometimes we need to get back to that first love to realize that we're his child and allow him to stir once again that dream that perspective that is bigger than ourselves because we are a child of a great big God and he wants to do far over and above even beyond what we could imagine but he is wanting to awaken and stir and reveal that to us through the help of his Holy Spirit so let's pray let's unpack some simple truths tonight and let's begin this journey of embracing this magnificent plan that God has realizing that we're all wired different but in that we still have a unique plan and we have a unique um, purpose of knowing that our life matters Lord God I thank you for the help of your Holy Spirit that you will reveal your truths and we have come tonight with here ears to hear Lord God unpack the plans that you have for us you said that we're to lean not to our own understanding to trust in you and that you would make straight and plain the path well tonight we've got our faith out there we're ready to believe to not um, talk ourselves out of it but to talk ourselves in it to decree and declare the great and mighty works 
that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So think about this. We, God wants to reveal to us our purpose. People perish for a lack of knowledge. He wants us to know the plans he has for us. And when we understand our purpose, we can weather through the conflict. We can have confidence knowing it is worth it. I remember when God began to unpack a truth. I had moved from California. I had gone to Texas the middle of my senior year and my world was turned upside down. I had thought I would become a computer programmer. I had no desire nor design to get married or have children. But you see, God knew he had to get me out of the place I was because I was allowing the influence of Southern California to define who I was and the plan and purposes that were before me were aligned, not because it was what was inside me, but it was the influence of the world around me. And when I moved to El Paso, Texas, not knowing a soul, God began to stir and redefine some priorities. The first one, my family. I was so busy and caught up with my friends and, and with those who I, my teammates, those that shared the same uh, interests in clubs, that I never had time for my family. And when all that was taken away, I discovered, hey, family's gonna be here for a while. And I have not yet cultivated a, a real deep, authentic relationship. And it began with my sister. And so as unique and opposite as we were, it was not uncommon for us to just lock heads. And uh, the best thing to handle uh, in the earlier years was just, especially as a teenage year uh, and time, I just avoided her. But God challenged me as I began to seek and, and ask for him to define how was I wired? What, what's my purpose? All that I thought uh, was me, and now that it's stripped away, I realized I had taken on uh, the characteristics of the society uh, around me. And this scripture uh, really unpacked itself for me at this time, and that's Proverbs 19.21. Many plans occupy the, man, the mind of a man, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So in this season, as I began to just ask for God's wisdom, who am I? What, what is the plans that you have? And as he began to identify the importance of, of reaching out to my family, I intentionally desired a relationship with my sister. Was she gung-ho about it? Uh, no. I mean, all those years, I never had time for her. I honestly didn't uh, celebrate the uniqueness of who she was. And uh, just to flip the switch, it didn't go over right away. But love never fails. And as I continue to pursue this relationship and plant these seeds, it finally, because love it will uh, bring, it's a, it's a seed, it's a force. It began to bring about a, a closeness that started out small, but began to prosper and grow. So when we understand our purpose, there's going to be challenges. This like this tug of war with my sister that she didn't quite truly celebrate <laughs> the importance and the value I was seeing at that time. But as she saw my, my heart, how true it was, and where I was coming from, over time, as I was patient, we began to build a relationship. And that went with my, my parents too. I was so busy before running and doing this, that, and the other, that um, it was fun to sit down and have some family meals and family times. My mom will tell you if she's watching. I used to write notes and uh, put them right outside my parents' door at night, uh, just telling them how my night was or if I came home late and, and missed seeing them. But I was intentional in this vision that God gave me. 
And if you and I begin to know that purpose that he has in that season and time and just take it step by step, he will honor those little steps. He will give increase. And as we become courageous in these relationships, as we begin to start what we want to see ourselves become, those characteristics and those actions that are most meaningful to us as he identifies them, they will become a pattern of who we are in this new season. Why? Because we are in Christ. And sometimes we don't realize what that means. It's a process of becoming. But relationships, I found out that investment is eternal. And I want, especially those who have shared in that personal relationship with Christ, I want to invest in their life and know that they, and because do unto others as you would want them to do unto you, that they will want to invest back. And talk about invest back. Let's give a shout out to our facilitators tonight. How about that? Say hi to Tammy and to Pat and Ann who are interacting with you this evening. Let them know that you're watching. Uh, give them a, a, a high five uh, and let them know what God is revealing to you as, as you are understanding how you're wired, as you begin to realize the purpose and plans that he has for you. We have the need to belong, to be a part of a group. You know, I was thinking about this this evening, and, he, and God brought me to the scripture in Philippians 2, 2. He says it this way. He says, we are to be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, united in one love. And we are to walk together with one harmon harmonious purpose. Isn't that interesting? Relationships. We belong together. There's something important about that connection with each other. And he wants us to invest in those relationships and to seek him in what we can do to invest in their life. And as we invest in them, God brings an overflow back unto us. Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't say anything that would hurt one another. Instead, speak only what is good so that you can give help wherever it is needed. And that way, what you say will help those who hear you. You see, we all have this need for friendship, for affection, the ability to give and to receive love. We have a need to be esteemed and, and to be respected, to, to be able to be valued. And in the relationships of life, and isn't that what Jesus did with the disciples? And then beyond that, the 70, and beyond that, the multitude. He connected with people. If God's very son would take the priority of his day and time to do that, how much more should you and I? And when Jesus left and ascended, he said that we're to go to all the ends of the earth and we're to make disciples. We're to develop and cultivate in these relationships. In that celebration is knowing how we're all uniquely wired. That as we pour into them, as God stirs in our heart through prayer or through our words, our actions and deeds, that there is this, this flow that comes back and forth. And then isn't that what a conversation is? I mean, right? When we talk to God, we don't just talk to him all the time and not allow him to speak to us through his word, through his Holy Spirit, through the peace that he provides. And in the relationships of life, God longs for us to have a dialogue. Often Jesus, and you've heard me talk about this, when he walked on this earth, he often would ask questions. He would ask, for example, may I have some water? Or what do you need? He invited a dialogue to occur. You know, this past weekend I was meeting a lot of new people, new friends. 
And how did I begin in that conversation? I began to ask questions. I began to learn who they are. What are their passions? What is it that they enjoy most in life? And it was in that place that they would often share their dreams or maybe even their challenges. And my husband would tell me later, how do you get that deep from just a, a quick question? But when your heart is in that place, when you understand how you're wired and you're comfortable in that space, you bring an invitation of safety and trust for others to open up and to experience a belonging that they long for and they are yearning to have offered to them. Tonight, I just want to encourage you. That's why we have our facilitators to invite a connection with you. Hey, we may not be in person, but that doesn't mean we can't connect. And with God's uh, grace, his spirit that is here, where there's no difference in distance, he brings a depth that only he can provide because we believe he can do just that. And we're longing for that with you. So think of this. We are all victorious. We are all able to come to that place to walk in love. And winners know who they are and they know what they are worth. And as victorious children of God, he longs for us to know that we are loved, we are valued, and that we're wanting to share that value and love and affirmation to others. Romans 12, 2 says, don't change ourselves to be like the people of the world. Let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. And then you'll be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You'll be able to know what is good, what is pleasing to him, and what is his perfect will. Your worth as a person, my friend, I want to encourage you. It's not determined by your accomplishments, right? We are saved by grace, by faith. Or the things that you have been conditioned to believe that defines you. God says we are to come just as we are. We are loved, we are celebrated, we are affirmed. And in that unique place, he says it is in your brokenness, in those ashes, our beauty, right? He brings a wholeness to each of our lives. And he wants us to bring that word of truth to those around us, that they are important. And that this conversation is something that is of great value to you. And sometimes, and you've heard Ann Sellers say it, that the greatest gift that we can give another is to listen. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to take offense and get angry, as his word reminds us. So your worth as a person, it is not determined by your accomplishments. And knowing yourself worth, it allows you to disassociate from the outcome of what you do with who you are. It's more about going through life and you are intentional doing the things that serve your purpose. Not doing things to be people pleasers. Not doing things because the world says, oh, well, that means you're somebody. You are somebody because you made Jesus the Lord of your life period. And in this life that you live, you enjoy because Jesus came that we could have life and, and enjoy that life. And we can live this life with just the anticipation, knowing that he has ordered our steps and he wants to lead us in the way that we should go. But we all have our blind spots. We all don't know and, and we uh, need the benefit of, of another, maybe to coach us or to mentor us. You know, Titus talks about how 
older women are to mentor the younger women or men to mentor other men. There is an importance of having that communication and that dialogue. And we have heard it in Proverbs about just the wounds of a friend, that they can see things that we can't. The other night, I told my husband, I can't take it. Lord knows I, I am trying to support you, but you need to get your hair cut. And if you don't mind, I'd love to take some time right now and help do just that. And he says, well, but my hair looks great. And I said, well, it looks great right here, but in the back, it is so long and bushy and shaggy. So last night as I cut his hair and then I showed him the mirror before and he's like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize how long and out of control it was back there. And then I showed him after I trimmed it and how much better it felt. He didn't even know it before. But you and I, we have blind spots and we need the relationships of another. And it's fortunate, actually, if we can have that trusted friend who is courageous enough to be that mentor to help us gain that perspective. Or today, we can reach out to a coach. Or many times, if we ask God, he will bring that mentor in our life. Colossians 3.16 says, Let Christ's teaching live in your hearts, making you rich in true wisdom. Teach and help one another along the right path. You know, knowing who we are and what our worth is, it gives us the opportunity to fight for what's good and to encourage that in others. It gives us the opportunity to take a pause, to pray, and be intentional when we're meeting up with friends or family or when we are heading to the work office space. And, and not just be about the work, but be about the process of the relationships working together as a team. I have found that as I began to give and commit my day before God, just as his word declares, he will bring it to pass. You and I, we have an opportunity to commit our relationships before him, to allow him to allow individuals that can round us out, to, to bring a greater depth, a greater insight in, into who we are and the gifts and talents that he has poured in us. Many times we don't even know what that potential is, but there are others that might have the dream or might have the ability to awaken and stir and you and reveal to you some possibilities that you might not yet have thought of. But in that dialogue and in that conversation, faith arises and it brings about, just as his word says, we're, we're salt to the earth. It brings about a thirst, a desire to know more. Once you recognize a, a blind spot, you're at a turning point. You're, you can commit to moving into a life where you become more self-defined, not anxious uh, about what others might think, but being confident with who you are in Christ. And you're willing to communicate your needs um, and your desire to own up to these blind spots. And you can then stay in a path that is productive and progressive but the choice is yours to make often i find in order to move forward sometimes i have to move back i need to apologize or i might need to readjust some some patterns thought patterns habits that have come in and have not brought and propelled me to uh, a position that will create that space for God to unpack his purpose in my life. It might mean that I, uh, and some of you know, we just cut out television. We cut out a lot of things that would bring distraction and you know, garbage in. It's a lot harder to, to be able to hear when you got all this distraction uh, talking back to you. So I began to guard what comes in to the portals of my heart and mind. I began to create time to be in his presence. 
to be still and know that he is God. I have began to be a person who asks and to real ask him to reveal to me who I am. Tonight, I just want to encourage you that you are people of purpose, that you're wired unique and different, that it's okay to, to be with gifts that are not like what you see in other people. It's okay to celebrate the workmanship that God has defined you with. It's okay to uh, be a person who's wanting to celebrate who you are. It's okay to put on a smile, be confident in who you are in Christ. And in that place of wholeness, of worth, you are then to love others in a place of worth and wholeness because we love others as we love ourselves. So winners, we're negotiators. As we know who we are, victorious, children of the King, we are able to negotiate and to create a place of peace. We are pursuers of peaceful relationships. And to find a mutual win, you have to make sure that you are pulling on the same side in this tug of war of life. I realized in my work relationship or with my friends or children, family, that we're on the same team. And so my tug of war, it's not with them. It is with an enemy that wants to be divisive, that is wanting um, me to be selfish. And I choose rather to humble myself and to give and to seek a peaceful compromise. Am I happy with that outcome all the time? No. <laughs> but I am pleased because I am honoring the God who is my Savior and Lord. 1 Corinthians 10.24 People should be concerned about others and not just about themselves. Tonight I pray that it awaken and stirred in you a hunger to understand and to reach out and to find greater depth in how you are wired in the purpose that he is revealing. Allow him to go deeper. Look at the skies and gain that perspective of a mighty God that will do far over and above all you could ever imagine. And hey, we've got some things happening. This year I wanted and the board uh, agreed to do something different. And it's Let's Connect gatherings. But our first one is going to start out as a virtual. But our other quarterly gatherings, we are looking forward to meeting in person. And so, if you're interested, look on the information line that will be provided for you to sign up to participate in this first event scheduled in March on a Saturday, March 12th, from 2.30 to 3.30. And our very own Pat Dinkins, who's facilitating tonight, she will be creating a forum, an opportunity uh, to have a dialogue with a guest speaker who happens to be your good friend, Reverend Dr. Tina Mackey Fadilla. She is a CEO and founder of MOVE. M-O-V-E, that uh, actually represents, um, designed um, actually to motivate others to victorious empowerment. And together they're going to have a, a conversation back and forth discussing this topic, loving in season and out. And following that discussion, we're going to welcome a discussion from those who have joined virtually. It's going to be a great opportunity for this launch of, an, of a new experience that we hope to, in June, do in person. Well, I thank you for joining us tonight. It was fun. You know how I love connecting with you virtually each week. And I want to hear from you. Let us know some of your takeaways. What is, what is God stirring on your heart? 
As God is revealing and unpacking your worth, share that with the others. Maybe they need to know just how much they are valued and celebrated, and maybe you can initiate that seed of hope in them tonight. And then carry it forward as you leave us this evening and go about your day tomorrow in the in the coming days. Plant seeds to encourage, to awaken, and to affirm how each of us are valued, are worthy, and are unique, wired in their own purpose and plan that God has for them. Good night, all of you, and I look forward to joining you next Monday. And until then, may blessings be upon you and overflow in your life. Good night.